Well, as you all know, I finished up my AR build back in May. And after doing that, a good friend of mine, who happens to be a law enforcement officer, contacted me and wanted to know if I could change or if I knew someone who could change the forearm on his uh, AR. Uh, he had the two-piece forearm and he wanted a free float tube put on. Of course, this was going to require taking off the Picatinny rail gas block and tube that was on it, removing the delta ring and barrel nut. And I told him I could do it, but the piece I had used to build mine, which was this, I had borrowed from a good friend of mine, uh, Willwood487 here on YouTube. He'd sent it to me, and I used it to finish up my AR, and then I mailed it back to him. Well, the law enforcement officer was ordering his uh, float tube for his rifle from Brownells. They just happened to have this, so he ordered that. Well, met up with him, got the gun, got this, and within about an hour, I had everything changed out. I had to drive the pin out to get the Picatinny rail or Picatinny rail gas block off. Then drive the pin out to get the gas tube off. He'd bought a low profile gas tube that actually bolted onto the gun so didn't have to do no you know pin back in. Put the gas tube on it, pulled off the delta ring barrel nut, put on the new barrel nut he had for this free float tube, and got everything lined up and was done. I already had the, the wrench. I bought that. Well, when I got done, took it back to him. He asked me why, what he owed me. And I told him I was hoping that uh, he might let me have the upper vice block. So he said, it's yours. So I got the upper vice block. And then after getting that, got on eBay, picked up a lower vice block, which goes in your mag well. So you can put your lower in the vice. But when I bought that, it also come with this, and probably not too many people know what this is. This is made for when you're cleaning your rifle. You pull the pin at the back, pull your upper receiver up. Take this pin out right here and put your upper receiver in here, put this pin in. Then set this down in your lower, push the pin back in there, and it keeps your rifle opened and don't have to worry about it closing on you or anything. So yeah, that little handy tool. And then this I bought. And some people may know what it is, some people may not. But when you're working on your lower receiver, one of the things they tell you is do not ever squeeze the trigger on your fire control group without your upper and uh, bolt carrier group in. Because the hammer falling could damage the mag magwell. Especially on a lumen receiver, it could crack it. So this little device here is your pivot pin. You pull that and you stick that down in your magwell or across your magwell. Push the pin in, and this sets back far enough to where if you have your hammer cocked back, you can squeeze the trigger and it hits this. This is you know, nylon, whatever. It hits this, no way does it get close to your mag well, but your hammer hits that. That way you could test your fire control group, test your safety to make sure it's working without having the upper receiver on. So now that I've got all this stuff, I may be sometime later on this year building another AR. Thinking about building another one, basically be a 5.56223 setup, but the barrel would be for a 300 blackout. Just a thought. But uh, got the tools to work on now. If some of my buddies need me to work on their AR form, I could do it for them. But uh, got the stuff now to do the work.